Good Sunday morning, everybody, from the home office of the Weather Center in downtown Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onick at the WREG-TV News Channel 3 studios. Quiet Sunday morning where it comes to weather in the Mid-South. We're not seeing too much of anything else to worry about at this time. From the earthquakes around central Oklahoma yesterday around Pawnee, a 5.6 magnitude earthquake. And these dots on the screen represent your reports that were emailed or sent in to the United States Geological Survey from across the area including right here in the mid-south area a lot of people sending in felt reports from especially around the metro area parts of west tennessee close to the river a lot in eastern arkansas not quite so many across portions of northern mississippi although a few out there and that again shows you just how powerful that earthquake was and just how widespread that energy was going across the entire Midwest. Even my own mom uh, felt it up into around portions of Topeka, Can Topeka, Kansas yesterday. So incredible to see that. Unfortunately, I didn't feel anything here at the News Channel 3 studios. Rest of the weekend, again, not really looking at too much of anything in the way of major problems for weather. It's going to be a hot one once again. Forecast in the red bar at the lower portion of your screen and back into the 70s later on tonight with a few clouds sticking around. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what went on with that earthquake again. Numerous icons back to the Oklahoma area from yesterday, including what looks like a brand new aftershock there in the red circled area right around Pawnee, Oklahoma. Have to see if we felt that there but as of right now, nothing directly taking place within the last 24 hours in the News Channel 3 viewing area counties across East Arkansas, West Tennessee, and northern parts of Mississippi. A lot of sunshine mixed in with a few clouds at Power Center Academy in Memphis. Also looking at some very nice conditions around Ole Miss, although a few more clouds down that direction around the track and field cam area, parts of the campus there. Again, not seeing any rainfall, but getting a few more clouds and a lot of activity early Sunday morning with some joggers and strollers around the quad cam and back toward Union Plaza, showing again a very quiet Sunday morning in progress. Cough temp decks for today are exclusive and very tongue-in-cheek recommendation. The possibility of seeing a good hot cup of java before this morning because it is just a bit on the cool side so you could probably risk that but into this afternoon probably want to think about something cool and icy out there remember your coffee temperature is your business this is just what we think it should be tongue-in-cheek only based on what the weather is doing outside to complement your experience for Sunday outdoors. Your taste buds are your problem. If you get a brain freeze or burn yourself on the coffee, that's your problem for not checking. Autumn countdown. We are getting close. 18 days and change as we the time we record this. So just a little bit over two weeks before the change in season as we go toward the equinox and looking pretty dry out there. Unfortunately, not that good where it comes to air quality. We're pushing a code orange for today with number back around 94. If we go over 100, we could be in the unhealthy area. So hopefully we'll get some change in the weather on that. UV forecast at a 7 today. Not bad, but not all that good either. So don't forget the sunblock if you're heading out to the lake for the Labor Day holiday activities. And once again for the day tomorrow, definitely want to think about some sunblock as well just to make certain that you are able to uh, keep covered up and keep your skin healthy. Yesterday's high temperature, 89 degrees. That's below normal for this time of the year, which is right about spot on normal, but fairly close and definitely not as bad as it could be for this time of the year. 109 degrees back in Death Valley, California. Low temperature yesterday, 65, which is about 5 degrees below normal. Record high for today, 102 set back in the year 2000, while 50 was as good as we could do for a record low. That back in 1952. And when that's your record low, you know that you're in the thick of summertime. It's just way too warm out there all the way around. No rainfall yesterday, a dry month so far, a quarter of an inch behind. Good possibility we'll make that up into the next several weeks, but we do have a surplus. Oh, yes, we do. About 14 inches plus out there. As of right now, no problems with wildfire danger. We're looking at a low wildfire danger thanks to all the rainfall and the very healthy vegetation across the area. Pollen and weeds, that's another story and another graphic for another day. But as of right now, because of that low burn ban, we're not seeing anything in the way of burn bans out across the area. Again, Tennessee does not issue burn bans per se, only on a case-by-case, must-need-to-do basis, and that's usually during a 
extraordinary times of drought and very dry conditions. Mississippi and Arkansas on their forestry websites have no information there in regards to anything involving a burn ban in effect. Sunrise today, we'll get to that in a minute. Moonrise today was at, not, will be at 932 just before the time we tape this. 921 the moon set tonight, so hopefully some clear skies to be able to see that sinking in the west along with Venus and Jupiter out there. 1026 a.m. rise tomorrow and 954 p.m. moon set tomorrow of a waxing crescent. Losing daylight pretty steadily. 12 hours 46 minutes today. 12 hours 44 minutes of daylight as we go into tomorrow. Rest of the forecast. Temperatures again back in the lower to mid 80s by the time we hit about mid-morning or so. And then as we get into the rest of the day, again, watching the areas that you see here in green, that's where we're going to be seeing the potential for maybe some scattered showers in and around the area, and that could spread throughout much of the rest of the Mid-South. Off and on, not looking at a weekend ruiner, but definitely not looking at clear skies either. Also notice the motion of the lines on screen, the winds coming up now out of the south and east, and that's going to help to transport this Gulf of Mexico moisture up this direction and that will keep the cloud cover out there from time to time and chances of rainfall as well. So stay tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. Mid-evening temperatures after sunset, a few clouds around and temperatures back in the high 70s to lower 80s. Through News Channel 3 at 10 and into tomorrow morning, temperatures drop not by all that much into tomorrow for the holiday. Temperatures for lows early on Monday morning back in the lower 70s. So high temperatures today, lower 90s. A hot one and an isolated chance of a shower and thunderstorm. Better chance into the holiday tomorrow. Not a great chance, but still possible. And remember when thunder roars, go indoors. Let's all be safe out there. Heading into Tuesday, back to work and back to school for a foreshortened work and or school week. Numbers back in the lower 90s once again, just above normal. Staying in that range with upper 80s to lower 90s throughout the rest of the week and into next weekend. Isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms into around the rest of the week and into next week as well. Again, it doesn't look like a washout. It doesn't look like severe weather. It doesn't look like major amounts of rainfall. But if you have outdoor activities, please play it safe. Let's make certain we all stay safe out there as we go through what's left of the summer season. Tropics at this time, Ermine is still looking to cause problems around portions of the East Coast states. It doesn't look like much this morning, and it's going to be working its way back to the west by just a little bit, and that motion could be looking to cause some problems as that counterclockwise rotation moves a lot of wind, a lot of surf, and a lot of water up toward the beaches, and that could cause beach erosion. That could also cause a lot of problems with vacation plans as well. Now as Ermine sits there for just a little while, it's going to eventually make its way back out to the northeast, but that's going to take several more days to get out of there. Notice the timestamp in the upper uh, right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that's going to be, again, late the week by the time Ermine gets all the way out of here, so we could see some travel problems because of that. Tune in for the radio forecast on the EAB network, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 throughout the rest of the weekend. And I'll have your complete forecast coming up bright and early Monday through Friday morning with Bob and Josh on Memphis in the morning first, and then talk back live sports chat from downtown the area around Memphis and the Mid-South area. Get the News Channel 3 app. It's available at the App Store. Search WREG Weather when you go there. Also, don't forget... If you'd like to take the Skywarn Spotter training courses, they will be coming up once again for the fall semester starting in about two weeks in Carothersville, Missouri at the Public Library, Houston, Mississippi at the Fire Department, Benton County Courthouse in Ashland, Mississippi, the Hardin County Fire, Disp Fire Department Station Number 12 in Savannah, Tennessee, and Tishomingo County Courthouse in Iuka, Mississippi. All those in the course of about the next month to month and a half. And there's more than that. These are just the first five. So if you'd like to volunteer, to be a Skywarn spotter. The National Weather Service could use your help, your eyes, your ears, your brains, and your kids. This would be a good opportunity to take them so they can get used to the idea of severe weather and find out what to do when severe weather strikes. More information about this, go to wreg.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, comments, these are my social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and also on Instagram, also on Google+, SoundCloud, WordPress, 
and trying to find a way to get it to the Game Boy system, but so far I haven't really succeeded on that just yet. And if you've got other questions at this time, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. That'll help you to get in touch with me. Questions, ideas about what you want to see on here, let me know. We try to keep it as topical as possible, but if there's something that you have to see on here, please let us know about it, and we'll feature them on our segment when we can do so. And once again, if you felt anything from this earthquake, please remember to tell the USGS about it so your information can be up here. You don't have to be a seismologist to participate in research. Your information could help seismologists study these earthquakes and what we can do to protect people against them and to ensure against any damage or injuries in the future. So you have a voice and you can use it and this is one of the ways you can do it by participating in citizen science. From downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik at the WREG TV News Channel 3 Studios. Thanks for joining me for the latest edition of News Channel 3 Weather Overtime. More coming up tonight on News Channel 3 on air and online.